everyone, welcome to this first video uh, on Witness Rugby. I've been meaning to do this for a long while, those of you who've seen the Love Rugby League videos and, and who follow me on Twitter, you know I'll do it. I do a hopeless job of disguise. Well, I never try and disguise that I am a, uh, an ardent Witness fan, so I thought, why not do a regular series on, on Witness? And, you know, I go to all the games and stuff and, and, and some of the burning issues, so I thought it might be something that you guys want to watch. So please like, share, and uh, comment on the on the videos and, and hopefully I can make this a, a regular a regular theme so I'm not quite going down the road of Arsenal fan TV I don't think uh, I don't think that'd be good for my career but I, I'm definitely keen to do to do as much witness content as we can over the season and, and try and make a, a weekly video so um, so for this first one I thought it's a good time to talk about witness in terms of looking ahead to 2019 I think it's difficult to uh, want to talk about 2018 after the relegation so I thought it might be a good opportunity to go through the squad and, and get some thoughts off, off people as well. Um, I think we're all disappointed I think really that there's no coach in place as yet. You know, we don't know, I mean there's, it's very difficult to know exactly what's going on. I mean of course in, in sort of the field of work that I do that you, you hear murmurs and, and you hear things all the time but I'm still not, I've still not heard anything concrete in terms of who the new coach will, will be. Uh, I'd like to have thought they probably would have got it sorted by now, but you know it's it's one of those things. So I think you'd like to think that something's going to happen soon because pre-season training should be starting pretty soon. So I think that's that's a priority. I think the club maybe, you know, that should really be a priority. I think that would ease a lot of fan concerns if, if uh, a coach was, was appointed. Regardless of that, the, the squad's coming together okay. Uh, for next season, um, what we're we up to now about 20, 23, 24. So Jordan Johnston's being announced um, as just before I was filming this. I think JJ's really good, uh, really good at retention. He didn't play as much last season. He had a few injuries, but I thought he was really good in in twenty seventeen. I thought he was a real. Um, I thought he almost became. He almost became quite a key player for Witness, which for someone of his age was was quite impressive. I know Witness haven't been great on the field in Super League for the past two seasons, but I, still, I, I did think JJ played above his, you know, above expectations, and and hopefully he'll he'll be able to link in well with, with Liam Hood, um, who, who will surely be the first choice choice hooker. I think Witness have done pretty well there in terms of covering the hooker positions, especially with losing, you know, last season there was four, you know, Jeremiah White and, and Danny Walker who's gone. Um, the Danny Walker one's interesting, of course. You'd like to have kept him. Uh, a product of the club's academy and some probably the most high profile I guess product of the Witness Academy in recent years just because of, of those sort of standout moments he had against Warrington and against St Helens. Um, it, I think it was inevitable really when Witness got relegated that he'd go. You can't blame the lad for wanting to play in Super League and you know certainly the way things are at the moment there's no guarantee that you know whereas perhaps 10, 15 years ago the relegated team was always favourite to come back up but it's not necessarily the case anymore especially with Toronto still in, in the championship as well. So um of course losing Danny Walker was, was disappointing. I suppose losing Matt Whitley disappointing as well. I think Whitley sort of Whitley's obviously probably been the most successful Academy product of Witness in terms of the number of games he's played and the way he's established you know, he's grabbed the first team jersey and established himself, but I think he struggled a lot over the back end of last season. He was playing in the centres, which I don't think is a, is the place for him. Um He's a bit of a strange one, Whitley. It'd be really interesting to see what, what Catalan do because I feel like he's not quite quick enough to be a back, but he's maybe on the small side to be a forward. So it'd be interesting to see whether Catalan do any conditioning with him uh, over the over the close season um, and see how he does. But it, it, I think it's great. I mean, as much as it's as a bad for Witness to lose them players, it's a, it's it's a sort of great rap for the academy that, that, that two more players are going to be regular Super League players next season. So while we're on, we'll run through the list of, of, of players at the moment and I'll, I'll sort of give a, a few opinions as I go through. Uh, Wellington Albert, a bit of a surprise I think. I was quite surprised actually that he was retained, not because I don't think he's a good player and a, a championship, I think he, he's more suited to championship than he, than he ever was at Super League, but it's surprising that someone who was apparently so out of favour has, has managed to get a two-year deal, so a bit of a bit of a strange one. Does that point towards, was there a little bit of disharmony amongst the coaching staff and the players or, or whatever and I've seen a few comments certainly Reese Hanbury was another one where I, I thought it was disgusting really the way he was sort of phased out and 
um, for someone who's given that service to the club and being very successful, or certainly been one of the club's probably top three players for the last six, seven years, I thought the way he's been treated not being great. But but yeah, Albert's there. Uh, replacing Hanbury, presumably at, at fullback, will be uh, Oliver Asher or Bot. I'm still a bit wary about um, his durability. Um, he's got a couple of injuries behind him already, but there's no question, you know, it was great that even in the in the dreadful run that Witness had last year, I mean, everyone was, you know, we got big raps in the Sky games and it was unfortunate he got injured against Salford when he did. So, um, Ashall Box clearly one they've got hopes for. Keenan Brand, another one who had an injury issue in his debut at Hull KR last year, so it'll be interesting to see how he recovers from that. Owen Buckley, who played a few games and did, I thought he did pretty well, and then he, he sort of dis disappeared from the first team for a few weeks, certainly dangerous on, on the high kicks. Um, not really seen enough of him in defence to, to judge, but he certainly looks like a player that you could feasibly play as a, as a first choice winger in the, in the Championship. Uh, Hep Kale, of course, was, was retained as, as captain, and that's a great appointment for me. I mean, he, he, you know, with Hep, the thing is with Hep Kale is he'll run through a brick wall, so it makes it a lot easier for those around him to want to do the same because they're uh, they see him do it. So he's a great leader, I think, Hep. He's a really nice guy as well, I think. Um, the issue, of course, with Kale is he's just keeping him fit. And um, But I think if Witness can get 20 games out of him next season, I think that'll be a, you know, that'll be a fair return. The Chapel Al Twins stayed. I think both of them have got something to offer. Danny Craven, I was I was quite happy with that retention as well. I think um, Danny's been around for quite a while. He was, he was just coming through when Witness were last in the Championship and he was doing really well until he got the bad injury against York. Uh, I think the thing with Craven is he's probably not going to be a starter, but he's someone who can cover multiple positions. You know, we talked about Ashall Bot. You know, has he got the durability to do thirty games? So if he's not playing, maybe Craven will play fullback. But as we've seen with with Danny Craven over the years, he can stand in a, 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 a half back at standoff, even in centres, even as the uh, interchange hooker. So I think a good sign in there for his utility value. Christine, um, this was. Quite a good signing. I, I think Christine probably up there with Kale as the best re-signing. I think he he's struggled. He's had two unfortunate injuries, but I think if you look at, at his career and, and certainly even in 2016 when when Witness started the season really well, Christine was a very big part of that. So I think he'll be a he's a very he'll be a good standard player at the top end of, of the championship. Joe Edge, young fullbacks return from Warrington. Owen Farmworth, uh, young prop. He's contracted to 2021. I like. Owen, I see, I've only seen him a handful of times and I, I thought he's been a bit unlucky not to get a bit more exposure to the first team because he, he played against Leeds, I think was his debut away and I thought he was really good and um, for whatever reason he's not had any many more look-ins so it'd be good to see a bit more of him. Sam Freeman, a winger, uh, Tom Gilmore's being retained, uh, interesting one for Tom because he's not quite grasped that opportunity, he's had the sort of number seven shirt given to him for the past two seasons and he's not still not established himself. Uh, I think he's probably a make or break year for him. Harrison Hansen, who signed at the back end of last season from Lee, he's a very solid uh, championship player. Liam Hood, as we've mentioned, is a good signing. Brian Ince played a lot of first team already, so it made sense to retain him. JJ, we men uh, John Johnson, we mentioned. McGrath, Lulu, I, the, uh, the pantomime villain sometimes, it seems, with witness fans. But I think McGrath's a, you know, he runs hard, he, uh, he doesn't shy away from, from anything. And I think he, he, he you know, let, let's. No, let's put something straight about McGrath is, you know, at no point in his career has he ever really been a first choice player, but you, you know, you can't run with 13 players, you need a squad of 25 and he's a great, I think he's a he's a decent player to have as, as a squad player and, and a, as backup, I don't expect him to be a starter, but certainly a championship, don't forget the last season he was in championship, he got in championship team of the year, so um, that's alright. Joel Lyons, who played a few at the back end of the last season, he's got another chance next season, it'll be interesting to see what happens recruitment-wise. Presumably, Witness are going to sign another half-back, but you, you don't know. He could end up with Lyons and, and Gilmore as the starters next season. Dan Norman, a prop. Lloyd Roby, a winger who's had a couple of first-team games. Adam Tangata, who's, along with Liam Hood, the only sign so far um, from Halifax. Certainly, the video clips we've seen of Tangata paint him out to be, to be really good. And you know, I think a lot of people, most of the people you speak to, have got, have got a high opinion of him. And then to finish that off, you've got Brad Walker and Liam Walsh, two more academy products who are committed to 2021. I think both of these players, are, these are probably two of the players that Witness have got the highest hopes for. They've both been around the England Academy set up and um, this might be the year now that they can they can break through. And then Sam Wilde rounds up that list. Um, 
just to finish off then, we're, we're, we're still waiting on Chris Ninu to see whether he comes back and Anthony Gellin, of course. We still, I'm still not convinced that that's going to happen, the, the Gellin thing. I know that there's not really been anything official. I think, I think the fact that it's going on for so long without the official confirmation that he is coming sort of makes me a bit more sceptical about it. But I think if Witness could retain Gellin and Inu, I think... You know, you won't be too far off, I don't think, in terms of if you got a couple, maybe a half back and another outside back. Um, but but we'll see. Um, in terms of the outs, I'll just quickly run through these before we go on this first half. I only want to make these all about ten minutes long, so I'm not wittering up. But uh, we've got Chris Houston and Jeremiah both retiring. Hambry um, was let go and probably going back down to Australia. Liam Finn, who's disappointing, I thought at Witness, is playing for Newcastle next season. Well, Hiraki. Is that whole KR and then Patrick Garvan, Lloyd White, Alex Jarr, Charlie Runciman, Stefan Marcy, who I would be interested to see where Stefan ends up because I would have definitely kept him um, in a championship squad. I think I think Marsh has got something to offer. I think the way he returns the ball and the way he runs uh, you know, runs the ball in is, is, is very good. I think he gets criticism because he doesn't do acrobatic finishes in the corner like Tommy Makinson, but you know, Marsh started off as a centre and became a winger. I I, I probably would have had a look at keeping Mars, but of course you don't know what the financial restrictions are. Uh, Joe Miller's gone to Toronto. I think both he and Tom Oliverson going to Toronto is disappointing. Um, you know, of course they've got to look after themselves, and I'm sure the financial rewards there are great. But to leave Witness having got relegated to go to a team in the same league, you know, I don't think anyone would have. I don't think anyone would have blamed them if they had gone up and signed for a Super League team. So, um, slightly disappointed with that one. Whitley, as we mentioned, has gone to Catalan. Danny Walker, as we mentioned, has gone to Warrington. And then the final one is Gil Dudson, who's apparently off to Salford. Um, sort of, I think Gil Dudson lost his way a little bit last season, had a few injuries. So, uh, But certainly, 2019 is going to be a, very much a fresh start for Widness. And hopefully, by the time I do another one of these next week, we might see uh, news on a new coach and some new signs. But thanks for watching. I hope you like it. I'd like to get fans involved so if anyone wants to come down to the office and film with me or if you want to leave any comments or questions you want me to answer in the in the upcoming weeks then then please do so and we'll hopefully make this uh, uh, a regular feature so thanks for watching and speak soon